You wanna build your own DIY computer and you find yourself on Newegg.com, who sponsored this video by the way, overwhelmed by all the choices and all the acronyms. You got your NVMEs, you got your LGAs, your PCIEs. What does it all even mean? Do you painstakingly research which parts are the best? No, my friends, not today. Today, you let the fates decide. Or more accurately, the sort by best rating feature. Yes, my friends, for today's machine, we are gonna be flying absolutely blindfolded, simply ordering whatever it is on Newegg.com that has the highest egg rating, throwing it all together and seeing what kind of computer we end up with. And I can tell you, some of the choices are probably not ones that I would have defaulted to. First up, we've got the Ryzen 7 3700X from AMD. It's an eight core, 16 thread processor, and at just $300, this puppy is a multitasking powerhouse, able to plow through the latest games and your renders or animations or whatever else it is that you like to do on the side. It has five out of five eggs with 3,300 reviews on Newegg, with some of the highlights being Good performance and the stock cooler is good. And if this chip doesn't convince you to dump Intel, you must be dead. What does that even mean? We won't actually be using the stock cooler though, so let's focus on the bottom line here. Pros, just what I wanted, even more. Cons, just too much power. Overall review, perfect product. All right, fair enough. We'll have to see what Ryzen 5000 has to say about the uh, perfect Ryzen 3000. On that subject, one of the best things about AMD's platform right now is the forward and backwards compatibility of their chipsets. So this motherboard right here, the MSI Meg X570 Ace, not only has features that are useful today like two and a half gig ethernet and Wi-Fi 6, as well as solid VRMs for overclocking, but the capability to upgrade it with a Ryzen 5000 series CPU down the line. Now, motherboards tend to be a little bit more on the finicky side than CPUs, so our highest rated motherboard was actually just four eggs out of five with 176 reviews, in spite of the fact that this is a $360 board. Let's go ahead and throw our CPU in there, a little something like that. <laughs> That's customer satisfaction right there. That's what it looks like. The herd mentality PC is going really well here so far. For memory, we ended up with a 16 gig kit of 3200 megahertz CL16 RGB memory from none other than G-Skill. The general consensus here with four out of five eggs and 2,494 reviews was that the pros are that they are highly compatible with most boards out there and one of the few 3200 megahertz kits that happens to be on the QVL or the qualified vendor list for lots of boards with the cons being that it has <clears throat> ignored my advances, will not make me a sandwich and does not run hot enough to warm my coffee. Those are some pretty uh, small downsides. The highlighted overall review was, has run continuously and flawlessly in my system for about half a year now. And also the RGB works and looks great. Here's one I didn't see coming. When I think boot SSD, maybe I bought into the hype. Um, I tend to think more like, you know, the guys that market cutting edge features like PCI Express Gen 4, like a Corsair, or the guys that focus almost exclusively on SSDs, like, uh, like a Samsung or a, a Micron. But Intel actually came out on top with their 660p. This right here, is a one terabyte drive that boasts 1800 megabyte per second reads and writes with QLC NAND. So not exactly a top performer, but at 130 bucks, it's reasonably priced for a terabyte of reasonably fast storage. And it's got five eggs out of five with almost 900 reviews. Advantages for this product include things like 
fast, reliable, and easy to install, while one of the biggest complaints about it was that the user no longer had enough time to go get a glass of water while their system booted, leading to dehydration. So it could be dangerous to use one of these SSDs, but uh, your computer will run fine just fine. Maybe the cooler will end up being something I don't agree with. I'm just kidding. The community knows not to what knows what's up. So highlights of the NHU-12S are just that it is a no-nonsense cooler that gets the job done. It has good enough performance while being absolutely silent if you configure your BIOS to a silent mode. And of course, it comes with Noctua's legendary SecuFirm mounting system, which I am personally a big old fan of. While we work on updating the compatibility of this older unit of this cooler, seems like a good time to talk about one of the patterns that I've noticed emerging in the hardware choices that we've looked at today. The SSD had a five-year warranty, the cooler has a six-year warranty, and Noctua has an outstanding reputation for providing uh, mounting brackets and adapters that customers need down the line for their products. And the Seasonic power supply has a 10-year warranty. It seems like, by and large, the herd mentality computer is considering things that a hardware reviewer might not normally, like the long-term support that comes with the product, as opposed to just the price to performance ratio. For the finishing touch, we throw on our fan and plug the fan cable into the CPU fan header right there on the motherboard. Back over to the power supply. Yeah strictly speaking need a 750 watt power supply but I also don't disagree with the Newegg community's choice here. This is the Seasonic Focus GX750. It's got 80 plus gold certification, it's fully modular, it's quiet, and even includes a hybrid mode where the fan will turn off entirely under very light loads, and it's gonna have a little bit of growing room for you in the future. The main pros were Hey, well, I didn't need a 750 watt power supply, but it was the same price as the 650, so why not? With one of the main cons being an out of date user manual. Oh, we should have a look at that. That tells me not to use it in the bathtub in 20 languages, but not how the fan control button works. Oh, Lordy. Okay, well, oh yeah, no, it doesn't say which toggle is right. I think out is actually hybrid mode, which is weird. Don't quote me on that though. Is there a separate manual for that now? Yes, 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 out. An Audi belly button is hybrid mode. Bringing us finally to probably the funkiest choice in our viewer's choice PC here. This is the Cooler Master Half XB Evo, and it's advertised as like a, a LAN box slash, I think they also say it's like good as a test bench or something. Do they actually say that or is that your thing? It's in the marketing for it, huh? Okay. What's funny about this is that even though I don't recall ever having seen one of these out in the wild, like at a LAN party or anything, it has a five out of five egg rating with, get this, 8,562 reviews as of the time of recording this video. I mean, that is, that is shocking. The main pros for this guy are that it is surprisingly spacious with a well thought out design in most regards. And that really is all you can ask for a case, isn't it? Six thumb screws at the back give us pretty much all the access that we need to the inside of the chassis for building. And I can actually see how this would appeal to people even though I haven't set eyes on this thing in oh, years and years. And that was probably a previous revision of the case. All the accessories are included in a nice little hard drive shaped cardboard box. Blomp. And it natively has support for up to four hard drives with two of them being hot swaps. Really is pretty easy to work in. Get our front panel cables out of the way. Plug in front USB 3. You know what's another interesting trend is the fact that RGB lighting seems to be a complete non-factor when it comes to people's purchase satisfaction. Of the three items that do have any RGB lighting, only the RAM is available in an identical but non-RGB configuration. So it seems like for the most part, people are just picking whatever is great bang for the buck 
with a complete indifference towards whether it has RGB or not. Even the RAM, I wouldn't read too much into it because a lot of the time what memory people buy is more down to what's on promo this week as opposed to what they actually think is the best. Although there were some complaints about Noctua's brown and tan color scheme. People really wanted it different though. They, there is a black one for $10 more. So apparently it just doesn't matter that much. You know, I made a couple offhand comments before about how old this case design is, but like this really dates it. It still has one of those AC97 offshoot dongle things on the front panel audio connector. Who's putting a motherboard old enough in... Uh, Cooler Master, revise your shiz here. Hooking up the front panel connectors now. This is not my best cable management, but uh, whatever. Whoever wins this thing can uh, fix it for me. Oh yeah, I don't think I actually mentioned that part of the new egg sponsorship for this video is that we're going to be giving away this computer. Fun, right? This is one of the nicest things about modular power supply cables is you can kind of run them whenever and whichever direction you want. So I'm running them over to the motherboard first. Then I will plug in the power supply end once I put the PSU in down here. Got a couple of eight pins. Man, this is easy to get at compared to a typical tower case where all the cable management room is kind of like behind the motherboard tray in this tiny little channel. We are gonna have a hard drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and Grab a SATA cable here and then, what the hey, why don't we throw it in the old, why don't we throw it in the old hot swap thing? So that's, oh, that's kind of a kludgy approach to that. They've just got this female connector like soldered onto an exposed PCB there. Uh, okay. The most amazing part is how much of a difference all these little conveniences make to how long it takes to complete a build. Like here we are, we are almost done, ladies and gentlemen. We're wiring up the power supply. We're gonna screw it back in, throw the graphics card in. Like we're close. We settled on the Western Digital 4 terabyte WD 405 FZBX because it's got four out of five eggs and 1500 reviews and 150 bucks is not a lot of money for a whack ton of storage space. It's super easy to install with this toolless mount. You just gotta line up the thingamaboober and then you put the pokies in the holies there and just kind of do like that kind of thing until it's kind of in there like it should be. And then you take the whole sled, yeah, slide it in there. Oh, oh, it's falling apart. Can you go in there? What the, oh, stop. Why are these getting caught? They're not even sticking out. Oh, it's under the drive now. Just go in. It's caught again. What the heck is it caught on? Okay, well, it's in now. This is a perfect example of how going by whatever has the best and or the most reviews can be a great strategy, but it can also mean that you're stuck with sort of out of date information. Because the thing about the RTX 2000 series is awkward. It's kind of been replaced at this point, but because the RTX 3000 series is so supply constrained, well, nobody has them to leave a bunch of positive reviews about it. So it's not like we're getting a bad product here in the form of the RTX 2070 Super Twin Frozer Gaming X from MSI. It's just that we're not getting the most current one. Remove before gaming. Zero Frozer, fan not spinning, don't worry. This card runs in silent mode under low load situations. Nice. That's fun. One of the cons of this card is that it is big, real big. But one of the pros is that MSI actually went out of their way to include a support bracket with it. How fun is that? Got a whole like bracket experience to help with that sag. Nothing against MSI, Nicholas, but I'm a little curious as to how exactly we got so many of their products. What did you use as a tiebreaker if you had two five egg products? Uh, basically the number of reviews. Got it. So we took whatever was the bigger seller yep. and said, okay, well, this is a greater sample size, so it's more statistically significant. I have never installed a graphics card with a support bracket like that before, and it's totally unnecessary in this chassis because the graphics card actually just sits like this. There is no sag, but I kind of want to do it anyway. So we're going to do it. Come on. Sometimes you just got to do stuff for fun, you know? 
Yes, my darling girl. You would like apples. Well, we're more of a PC house. What am I playing? Oh, I'm not playing anything, my love. I'm uh, building a computer. Uh, actually, yes, you can help if you'd like. Would you like to help? Okay, come here. Fun, this is something I didn't actually notice before. These handles are super handy if you want to move the system around. All right, go ahead, one there and one there, my darling. This might take a while. Let's go get our peripherals so we can fire up some games on here. It posted immediately. Let's go ahead and try XMP. I mean, it's only 3200 megahertz RAM. It should be okay. Don't read too much into the monitor or peripherals. These were just things we grabbed from the office, not uh, the top rated ones or anything like that. Oh, this game's violent. You can't watch this, darling. All right. We're running some Doom Eternal at 1080p, at, well, just shy of 300 FPS, which actually makes more sense than you might think with this 360 hertz monitor. Nice and clean, obviously, because it's like the butter smooth. I mean, that doesn't change that I miss a lot of the shots I take, but minor details. See you later. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. Oh, I died. That's okay. The main point was, does the system work? Yes, it does, and <laughs> does the review system work? Actually, it kind of seems like it does without any knowledge of parts other than making sure that our CPU and motherboard were compatible. All we had to do is take the top reviewed products and we ended up with what is not only a very competent gaming rig, but even one with great cooling and silent operation. And it's a pretty great value. And the best part is, thanks to Newegg's sponsorship, you don't even have to pay for it at all if you win it. We're back at the office, and guess what? Instead of the last gen RTX 2000 series card, Newegg asked us to upgrade our system with a new EVGA 3080XC3 that they sent over. I think Newegg must be going for a five egg rating here, because check this out. They also sent another card, an EVGA 3090FTW3 for us to give away. No, not for you. So enter below for a chance to win this PC with a 3080 or a 3090 FTW3. And afterwards, go check out Newegg's PC Builder, which helps you choose compatible parts for your next build and upload your builds to Newegg Showcase to show them off. It's that time of year, guys. Newegg is having Black Friday deals all month long, including a Black Friday price protection program from November 1st to November 22nd, so you can find links to all of this in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video and you weren't lucky enough to win this, maybe check out the Ruthless Economy build because you don't have to spend this much to get a, well, functional gaming mig. <laughs> gaming mig, gaming PC, gaming machine, rig, whatever, just go watch the video. <laughs>